Hey everyone, I hope you're having a beautiful week. I'm Dom here at Redleaf Exotics and the time has finally come to do a tour video. So let's look at some beautiful Nepenthes, other exotic plants and talk a little bit about them. Here we go. So I love doing the tours in the spring because so many different uh, genuses and species are flowering and looking their best this time of year. So overall, it's really nice to look at everything, usually around this time of year. I've uh, been really busy, so it's getting harder to do the tour videos, especially there's so many plants now. Uh, to look at every single one, impossible. But we're gonna go through and I'll highlight and look at some of the, uh, the plants that are looking their best right now and just some of my favorites. But we're gonna start on the front table and we'll just wing our way through. So let's just get in here. Uh, this is where a lot of the highland plants are, some helium fora. This is the beautiful purpurescens with its nice blunt nectar spoons. We have a platykyla here behind it. It's great to see platykyla and how different um, those upper pitchers are from the lowers. And we have some beautiful uppers on one of the tables, so I can't wait to show those to you, but we'll try to keep this in order. This is not carnivorous, but a lot of people ask about it. It is a Bilbergia, or Bilbergia, uh, Darth Vader, and it gets these beautiful black pitchers, and I love the shape of them. They just stay more tight, curled together, and they almost look like they're gonna eat something. So they blend in really nice with the Nepenthes. We have some Vici eyes up here in the front, just different clones and forms. These get beautiful pictures, some of them. I did some cuttings on them, and these are the basils. Love some striped Vici eyes. We have a cutting beside them of the nice green pear stone with a squat pink body. Got this one from Jeremiah Harris. And it's starting to put on some nice growth. It just recently rooted. The beautiful mollus. Look at that pear stone. In the background here, it's going to be hard to get some of these pictures. We have Raja Cross Brabidgie, Elisa Patrana. Nice size pitcher coming on it. The air coming through the evaporative wet wall feels so nice. Someone asked if I could touch on, you know, some of the mechanics in the greenhouse, and I'm not going to get too in depth, but this big wall we have right here in front of the Highlanders, it's an evaporative cooling wall, and those pads have water trickling down them. They're about uh, six or more. I think these ones are eight inches thick, maybe, but the water trickles down, and there's fans in the back pulling the air through them, and that evaporation or evaporative effect is coming through, and it feels so nice in front of the, the wet wall right now. It just feels like air conditioning, even though we are pretty humid here in Tennessee, it works superb for Highland Nepenthes. Uh, you could see Lingalata loves it. Look at the pictures. We just recently did a video on this beautiful species from Sumatra, but look at those dark purple pictures. They have like a blackish pear stone. There's some purple. They have a gray tone to them from all the fuzz. Really striking. One of my top favorite species of all Nepenthes. There's just nothing like Lingolata. And I'll show you guys some beautiful hybrids with it later on. We have in front of it, it's sitting on top of this Sotin burrowy eye. This is the largest one in the collection. It's looking nice. I've had this since the early days of Brooklyn. And this is the most vigorous of all the seed grown variants we grow. And I love that it's a red variety. Got some Vici eyes down here. Here's a Loei Edwardsiana. Got a few of these around the greenhouse. This is one of the latest Exotica creations. Look at that Parastome. 
a lot of teeth, good dark color, and it's starting to get a lot more chunky as this plant matures. Very vigorous, much uh, faster growing, much more faster growing than Tresmariensis, that's for sure. <laughs> See, we got some Vichy M's up here. Really good shape on these. Look at that red coloration in the tendril. We have a love, another Loei Eddy. Beautiful. I'm gonna go up here in the air. I actually wanna bring this plant down. It's always dangerous when you bring things down, you never know it's gonna break. <laughs> this is the beautiful Nepenthes nebularum. I need eight hands. Look how beautiful this new picture is. Wow. A lot of people uh, think these are just Rob Cantley eyes, but these are so different. So different. A big black, dark looking truncata picture, but I mean, look at this pear stone, the multiple stripes. And this body color, this glaucous, kind of dark black purple, very unique. It's dusty, chalky, and these plants also stay a lot more compact and small, uh, smaller compared to the Rob Cantley eyes. But anybody can believe what they want. It's a beautiful species. <laughs> right below, we have some beautiful John Bond pictures. Look at how cute these are. And look at this fluid in here, really sticky. But they're growing so happily down here in the sphagnum with all their little traps. I love this particular variant. It's seed grown from Exotica. The throat and pitcher opening is very spherical and bulbous and it kind of constricts at the waist, but these are a lot more dramatic in shape than some of the other Jambon here in the collection that I'll show you guys. Really beautiful, it's, it's my favorite form in the collection. There is one here, which also has beautiful shape. The peristome is really nice on this one. A little stripey in this, and I like the scalloped edges. Beautiful. Uh, coming down, what do we got? There's a Loei cross of Fipiata hiding in here. I'm not gonna dig it out, but here's some of the pictures in the front. Really neat, and these look like a more tubby Loei and a Fipiata picture. A lot more lid bristles. Look at all these. It's crazy. Really neat. Can't wait for uppers. Um, what else? This one here is a new species, a newer from Papua New Guinea. SP Papua New Guinea. Beautiful. Look at the fuzzy dark pictures and fuzzy leaf margins. This is the largest one I've seen so far in cultivation. Um, but let's see. How it continues to grow. So far, so nice. We have some Ophipiatas up here. Seed grown hose mountain forms. Yeah. Really nice. And back here we have some Vichii. This one is great. I'm going to call this one Red Tiger. It's from Exotica. It's their new K cross M. It stays super striped, but the peristome and the pitchers get this red blushing, but remain with striping. Should be another amazing plant for breeding. Would die to get some more of the Barrio genes in here. I'm going to take this one out for you guys, actually. Look at that. We got Helium 4 McDonald Day here. So exquisite. I love the veins. This is my favorite Helium 4 And this is the second one in the United States to bloom 
this far. So I'm really excited. Hopefully it can make some stuff with it. But a beautiful species and it has a lot of these little offsets coming up around it. This particular uh, clone here is from Hortus Botanicus Leiden uh, in the Netherlands. And it's a seed grown plant, so it makes it really unique and special. We have another VCI hiding back here. It's gonna be hard to get in all the VCI. They're so scrambly, they entangle in each other, but this is another beautiful one. Squat pink pitchers, nice striping, good flare. Really cool. There's a nice orchid here. Beautiful dendro, uh, Dendrobium Cuthbertsonii. My, my tongue is beginning to turn numb already, and we just begun. Let's see, we have a lot more VCI. Here's the beautiful VCI Candy Dreams. This is one of its nicest basil pitchers this far. It got this nice base growth, but it has a big vine back here that's growing. It flowered twice, so that takes a lot of energy out of a plant. Uh, but this basil is nice and strong. It's not the best uh, I've showed you guys candy dreams, but still beautiful nonetheless. We have Edwardsiana sitting up in here. It's a nice seed grown one from Exotica. Beautiful red pitchers. Looks awesome. We have the famous Jeff Wong Vichii down here. Looking better than ever. I cannot wait to breed this with Candy Dreams because it is a female. So that would be awesome. We have one of the M's right in front. Exotica's latest Grex. Look at that flare and it stays that way. Leave it to EP to get those prime genetics in there. This is great. And it opens so colorful and striped. Here is a VCI A. I bred these just a couple years ago. This is Candy Dreams with um, our female Barrio M. Now this picture was nice and pink and solid when it first opened, but it's been open for a while. And this looks just like a Candy Dreams at a small size. You could see the newest picture here is getting that beautiful pink coloration. The speckles up the wings, just like daddy. And beautiful squat pitchers. This so far identical to Candy Dreams at a small size. It even has the red speckles there in the leaves. There's a nice lowy eye in here producing some lower pitchers. More lid bristles, love it. Here's another John Bon. Really neat pictures, love them. We got a seed grown Trismatiensis here. This one was pretty small. I'm starting to put on some good size. Let's go down in here. We got some Singalana. Beautiful toothy peristomes. There's one back here too. I love this Barrio Vici. Great striping, nice tubby pitcher, and it stays striped, which is really neat. Hmm, got a lot of smaller things. There's some big Burbigiers back here. There's a nice Carunculata. Big black pitchers. Look how nice they are. Toothy too. Just gonna let them hang where they were. There's some helium for uh, we got Drossera. We just did the Drossera video, so I showed you guys over here. Um, but this is where I keep some Heelys. I have them all around the greenhouse, but I just keep some of them under this SP3000 
a grow light from Mars Hydro, do some cuttings. This is a macrophylla cutting. Starting to get a nice picture. We have Ceph's, Cephalotus. Beautiful. What else? A lot of seedlings. We have some Brachinia back here. Carnivorous Bromeliads, Hectoides, and um, Reducta. Hectoides is growing really good. Now we'll come over to the middle. Take you guys in here. Um, hmm. Which way am I gonna go? I'll go through here. We have some minima uppers, closely related to maxima. Here's a neat one. This is a Loei Campanulata Edwardsiana. Starting to get those teeth. Good color. Very vigorous. Loving the Edwardsiana hybrids from Exotica. They're so tough. There's another one buried in here. This is Truncata Fithiata cross Edwardsiana. Nice dark pitchers. And speaking of dark, love this one. A pretty rare hybrid. This one is Flava crossed with Ovada. Of course, from Exotica. And this one here is a female. I think I did Vicii with this that's sprouting. Should be interesting. Coming down in, we have Tenuous in here. It's charming little pitchers. They're all tangled down through here. Behind it, we have Hamada hanging out. Look at those toothy pitchers. one here. I love Hamada. I'd say the only thing I don't like about it is how paper thin the pitchers are. One humidity shift or change in the environment, say goodbye to their pitchers. <laughs> so really neat, but just very delicate. Moving along, there's all kind of stuff in here. This one here is Nepenthes pulchra. Producing some nice sized traps. Similar to Bashiana. Let's see, it is very humid in the greenhouse right now. Very humid. Um, here's a cool little one up here. I have a few of these around the greenhouse. This one's Loei Vici Bashiana cross Vici Candy Dreams. You can see the color from the LVB VMV or the Loei Vici Bashiana. Um, and the Candy Dreams shape. Fuzzy Vici like leaves, so that should be very nice when it's mature. There's all kind of random plants just everywhere. I'll just pick up some stuff. This one's a hybrid made just a few years ago. Um, this one is, come on, don't read the name tag, uh, is Spectabilis Northiana Vici cross Platykyla. You can really see the platy striping and color in there. And this parent, the female, gets very flared stripe pitchers, so it should be a good combination. Got some more Heelys. This is a Burke eye cutting, producing some pitchers. Come around here. This one's a Lowy eye. Cross Platykyla. We'll see how far I get without reading any labels. It's always fun. But yeah, a lot of beautiful plants up here. Someone just asked about this planter I made. This is a bonsai dish that I planted a small hybrid in. This is a Tentaculata cross with Campanulata. Um, I'm sorry, it's Campanulata cross with Tentaculata. Stays very small, so that's why I put it in here. And I put some pings around it, this driftwood. 
and it just sits up here and it looks really cute. I love doing uh, carnivorous plants in bonsai dishes, especially the ones that stay small. Here is the glorious platykyla I was telling you about. There's a couple in here, but look at the uppers on this thing. Look at all of them. This is Exotica's latest Grex. One of their latest Grexes between their number five plant and their number eight. And love this flared peristome. This one back here is a different variant. It's labeled as their best male. You can see all the peristome on this one's more flat and the other one's a little more wavy. Platykyla is really, you know, just blown my mind here in the greenhouse. The upper pitchers are insane. We have some Aimee mixed in with it. Here's a beautiful one here. And I love the uppers on these two. Just beautiful infundibular shape. Nice big throats. And very viscous fluid on these two. Here is a Lingulata hybrid I wanted to show you guys. Look how beautiful this is. This one's Lingulata. Lingulata cross Loewe Vici Campanulata. And you can see the camp shape. I hope it stays pretty small and compact um, like some of those Campanulata hybrids. But beautiful dark color as with most and all of the Exotica Plants' latest hybrids with their Lingulata. Really neat. Um, there's all kind of stuff. There's more Platykylas down in here. Just flaried pitchers everywhere. Let's see. Here's a beautiful Vigelii upper. Look how cool that is. love the big bloated throats. I love when plants, the upper pitchers, or just the pitchers are kind of hourglass shaped. Really gives them a striking appearance. Really neat. Let's see. This is one of the last ones I'll show you on this bench. This is Truncata Ovata Vici Candy Dreams. What is this going to do? It looks like a little Truncata Ovata. It looks like a Candy Dreams. Look how tubby they are. It might be the closest thing to a black vichii when it matures. Let's see where it goes. Really nice. So you guys can follow me this way. We'll come through the jungle. Uh, we'll look at some plants hanging up here. Um, all down that side of the greenhouse is seedlings. There's just stuff everywhere. What could I show you guys? This one here is a Loei vichii bashiana tres mariensis. Nice tooth. I love Loei Vici Ibashiana hybrids. Look at this. This one here is a um, Sibonensis cross Jacqueline. Jack hybrids are great. We have all different kind of red hybrids up here. This one's neat back here. You guys ready for the name on this one? It's a Rocco Exotica Bashiana Vici cross Loei Vici Bashiana cross Maxima Mira. Weird, flared, tall necks. All of these look great. Love DP's Grex of this. Um, what do we got? We have some Berkii uppers. This plant's a female. Made some, actually did Berkii cross Edwardsiana. There's a couple of those growing out. Those should be neat. Hanging in there. Here's the beautiful, I call this one Queen Amidala, and I'm, I'm loving that it is a female, actually. Gets beautiful red pitchers, flared, and I did do this one with Candy Dreams. I hope they come through. This seed looked pretty good. So Truncata Vici Vici would be great, but let's see where it goes. Want to come out. There's some more Eddie hybrids in here. This one's Belly Eye Talagensis. Cross Edwardsiana. Should be great. Still very small, so got to give those traits time to come in. This one's a Vent Sib Cross Edwardsiana. A lot of teeth on them at a small size. 
And then up here we have a favorite. I love this one. It's a Ventricosa Sibonensis, a Zumie Cross Trasmadiensis. Little gremlin like pitchers on it. Look at those peristomes. It's been a favorite in my collection for a long time. Got a truncata Edwardsian over here. Nice toothy peristomes. Getting some good size now. We have a Loei Nebularum. Beautiful black pitchers. Love how dark these are. And one thing I really like about Loei hybrids, or just some hybrids that do this, I love when the wings down the bottom just kind of twist and turn all wavy like this. I just love that little feature that some of them get, usually on the low EI hybrids. We have a Truncata Cross Mollis from Yamada back here looking nice. I love a good primary when you can see both of the parents really strong. What else we got? I love this one here. This is a Spectabilis Truncata Cross Bashiana. Huge pictures on this. Nice stripes. It goes all the way up into the ceiling. There are pictures up there. Might be really bright, but they're everywhere. Something hiding in here, Truncata Hariana. Looking good. Loving the Truncata Eddies more than this so far, and they're a lot more easy to grow. This one's being a little slow, but nice. Oh, this one is so great. Here is an in-house hybrid I created uh, just a little over a year ago, looking amazing. This is Loia Vici Bashiana, Vici Maxima Vici Cross Spectabilis Vici. You can really see the Spectabilis Vici in there, and it has a nice tubby pitcher. It's really cool to think back of the beginning Brooklyn days, doing tours and showing you guys that greenhouse. And now there's, you know, our own hybrids here that I get to show you guys. It's so exciting. And I mean, look at the color on that. Should be amazing. Here's another hybrid I made right beside it. Loia Vici Bastiana Vici Maxima Vici, same female, but this one's with Mollus Vici. Look at the color on this thing. Really intensely striped too when it first opens. Um, and a lot more green as you can see by this picture coming along. But it's so fun to just watch them grow up, mature, and then turn into something like this. And although this is darkened, I love that I could see all the stripes. Beautiful. Oh God, there's so much stuff in here. Uh, we have more Edwardsiana things. Here's a Edwardsiana cross mollus just starting to open. Here's one that is opened. Really toothy. What else? There's all kind of stuff in here. Oh, we have one down here, a big fat red one. This is Leviathan from Jeremiah Raja cross peltata. Very reminiscent of Raja but I love the red color in the leaves. Very colorful plant. We have some Loei Jacqueline hiding in here. Oh, sometimes they jump out of my hands. There's one, a nice one down here. This plant's loaded. This is the best it's ever done. As the years go on in this greenhouse, now three, you can see how the Nepenthes are like, okay, we're settled, we're in our home, we don't want to be moved. And they start to put on uh, really good growth as they're settled and just in their consistent habitat. Let's see, beautiful Ime Vici. I love the peristomes on these. Give me stripes and I'm happy. Anything that looks like a Vici. Uh, Vici Trasmariensis, an older pitcher. You guys know I love saying this one. Loei Vici Bashiana Vici Maxima Vici. This one's a beautiful female clone. 
And I did do candy dreams with this, so I can't even imagine what those are gonna look like. A lot of them are sprouting too. So we'll see what kind of ingredients mama gives us. It's hard to reach in here. There's a beautiful truncata jacqueline in here coming into intermediate upper pitchers. Here is the male Spectabilis vicii, who is in this hybrid I just showed you guys. And you could see the parent very clearly. I mean, look at that. But do you see how I added a little more squatness up in there? And I do like that this body's more solid and not as speckled. So maybe it'll be a new and improved Spectabilis vicii. Here are some more danglers. This is a newer hybrid. It is Vici long neck cross Adriadnei cross Berbigier. Should be good. And one thing I love about small plants too, especially with Exotica's breeding, is this might look green and like, I don't know, maybe a lot of striped small Vici hybrids, but no an EP once this thing starts to get about six inches and you start seeing the mature pictures kind of hinting through, this is probably gonna be ridiculous. I mean, very few of their hybrids ever disappoint, at least me. Uh, here's another one from them. This is a newer Eddie hybrid. It's Rocco Exotica Bastiana Vicii cross Edwardsiana. And this actually is maybe a good example. You could see how much more chunky, thick, uh, and pronounced that peristome is. These were some of the older pictures. See how skinny the lip is? even this one here but now once this starts to gain size just um the vici features should start to come in more chunkier lip more flare and with the edwardsiana i'm really excited to see what it does oh this one's so beautiful this is uh exotica's alada but now it goes by grace la flora really cool looking plant. I just, the mouth, this green, glaucous, minty kind of interior really makes this plant stand out when you look at it. Nice shape in the pictures too. And here's another one up here that goes by a lot of Varbashiana Mimic, which is probably another Grace of Flora, but look at that. amazing shape on them. Here's something I wanted to throw in the video just because it's really neat looking and I love sharing artwork and fun stuff that customers and friends send us. But this is a really neat skull planter that uh, Darren Heppel sent to me and it is so neat. When I opened the box, I'm like, wait, there's no way this is a real skull. Um, it looks so realistic and it looks awesome with Nepenthes growing in it. And I will tag his Instagram um, on here if you guys would love to get one of these to grow your carnivorous plants. And it's so fun to have in the carnivorous plant jungle. Love this one here. We have these for sale on the website. I love this plant. It was given to me by a friend, Enid, or Enid. You can tell I'm used to aeroids. Ethan, or Ian, Ian, Ian. Um, but this one here, I really messed that up. But this one here is Columnia Gloriosa. Gets big red trumpets, loves being in a basket, um, and made a ton of seed. I think there's seed pods on this somewhere. No, nope, looks like they were harvested. But thousands of seed from a pod. Here's another hybrid I made not that long ago. This is LVB, Loia Vicia Bastiana cross. Rocco Exotica Bastiana, Rocco Zachariana Spectabilis Trismatiensis. I don't know those names. They are just in my head and they stay there. We have some bromeliads, some catopsis up here. Got to do some trimming. But beautiful. They love growing up in a more aerated, bright situation. Love this plant. 
This is a Loei Truncata Trismatiensis. It's like a more exaggerated Loei pitcher. Really neat. This one's just opening. It'll probably be bigger than this. Um, and that's one thing I love about Nepenthes too. When they first start opening, sometimes you think they're fully grown, and then this pitcher can get probably double this size in a, I don't know, maybe a week's time. I've noticed that especially in the spring, we get a bigger expansion. The pitchers open, and they always surprise me how big they get just over the next few days. Um, this one is a newer one, Maxima. Cross Sib Truncata. Starting to put on some size for how small the leaves are. We have Truncata Nermis up here. All these upper pitchers. There are some lowers down in here. A nice mix of them. Don't want them to slingshot back. <laughs> uh, here's a nice good one from EP. This is a Zumie Crosvicii. This has a lot of nice pictures on it. Nice and dark. Here's a big one. This one actually ate a mouse. This is a Peltata Cross Truncata. I don't know if we could get down in there. It's probably so murky. Uh, it's very murky. But Brian actually found a mouse in here the one day. When they start, e in, when they start eating mice, that's when they start getting bigger. Um, what do we got? This one is a Loei Vichia Fipiata. Really neat look to it. I love the dark interior. A lot of exudate and lid bristles. We have some Loei ventricosas. We have maximas. We have, oh God, there's just so many. This one's beautiful. It is a vent Siberkii cross jacqueline. And I also wanted to mention, uh, you know how much I love Exotica. <laughs> they just did a tour video of their greenhouse, the Highland. You have to watch it. I literally sometimes will sit there as I'm like drifting off, just watching their tour videos for inspiration. Their plants are insane. Um, but it's really cute to watch Jeff and Andrea go around the greenhouse and her have to do some correcting sometime. <laughs> this one here is a vent sib. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. This is a Nagabongzo cross saber dark cherry. Really been enjoying their Naga Bongzo hybrids. All are black and dark. Uh, and just, I mean, with Saber, look at those teeth. This should be insane when it's big. This is great. This is another Rocco Exotica Bastiana Vichii, Loia Vichia Bastiana, Maxima Mira. And like I said, nice flared, exaggerated, weird looking pear stones on most of this Grex. I'm going to get on this side. Look at those. This should put some really nice traits into things uh, that I'll end up breeding with it, whether it's a male or female. Really cool. Uh, here's another dark Nagabongzo. This one is Vent Sib Nagabongzo. You could see almost pure black. I think this is probably the darkest picture in the greenhouse. Some pitchers get so dark purple, they look black. And then some, this just looks black. <laughs> uh, we have lower pitchers on Loei ventricosa. This is the giant form. Stay right there. I think there's one hiding. Here's a bigger lower. But beautiful. This has basil, so there's lowers all around the pot. A prolific and robust grower in the greenhouse and always a must-have for the collection. Uh, this pole is being taken over. 
um, by Morloi Ventricosa. These are the uppers on it. This is a beautiful plant, uh, probably one of my favorite from the BE. Uh, this one is Rob Cantley Ovada. And in Brooklyn, this thing covered the whole post, and now it's starting to get right back what it used to look like. And that's three years ago, FYI. Um, a lot of people think that Nepenthes look beautiful all the time. Like you're gonna have this big, beautiful plant covered in pictures all the time. When you have a collection this big, let's say like Vici I Candy Dream, sometimes you go through where the plant will look so beautiful for a long time, then it flowers, then it has to get a basil, then the basil has to get big and pretty. The spike might take a while to get the big, beautiful pictures you know it for. So the Nepenthes aren't always, oh my God, hundreds of pictures. They go through their stages like any plant. But overall, I try to keep um, a lot of the plants here right on point. And they do go through their seasons. Once we hit fall and there's a little less light, and then once we hit spring when there's more light, the plants change a little. Some of the pictures are better looking in spring, some are better looking in fall. So if your Nepenthes is going through the motion, sometimes they do. Um, just keep that in mind. <laughs> or you'll get stressed out always wanting your plants to be perfect. Um, this one here is a Loei Vici Tivii cross Platychyla. Awesome uppers. Like giant platies. Uh, we'll move back up to there. We'll come a little forward. Truncata Edwardsianas. But we'll come up to this front table and I'll show you guys some of the stuff that's growing in here. There's all kind of entanglements. The beautiful Truncata Bashiana. Um, you guys, if you've been following, you saw the. Um, the highlight video we did on this and you remember how huge they were and these are really big but this is a great example this plant had tons of huge well over a foot tall pitchers now this plant is a vine it has a basil and what i'm looking forward to see you could see how the basil will get these this one has some good size but the basil is where the nepenthes are going to get their biggest pitchers um, a lot of collectors and growers uh, especially newcomers I see always wanting to rip their basils off and trade them or whatever. Well, that might work <laughs> and you'll have your plant, but the basil gets the biggest pictures, guys. That basil is coming off, you know, say this plant's five years old, a five-year-old root stock, so you're getting those huge pictures with all those roots. The moment you remove the basil, you just have the same old vine that's on the same old root stock, and this will grow and be great. But key to success, cut the vine, keep the basil, if you can. And if you're good at cuttings, you can make a lot more cuttings out of this than, uh, you know, just ripping the basil off and being left with the big main plant. So just a little word to the wise. Leave those basils on there. We have these beautiful, I love this, Loei Zachariana, previously known as Fusca. Uh, love the uppers on this. That... Zachariana type lid, kind of long and narrow, beautiful. Can't set it back down. Love a good low eye hybrid. Oh God, I'm gonna just get lost in here. Uh, we have, this is an Adriadne I cross Berbigie. Starting to get some good size to it. Not as big as the one Andrea pulled out of that hiding spot by their Loei Truncata, but this one is beautiful. Looks just like the clone they have, um, now clone because they make cuttings of it, um, but beautiful dark pictures. Speaking of clone, we'll go on some more ramble. Uh, when you're doing Nepenthes clones and seed grown variants, whatever, a Nepenthes is not a clone until you replicate it whether it's by cuttings, uh, tissue culture, where you're getting the cells making identical copies. But none of these plants really in here, like the Shrunkata Bashiana, this, I, I can't really refer to this one as a clone until I take a cutting, and then you'll have this exact clone, which is a female. But other than that, I kind of like to save clone for tissue culture. I like to say forms or varieties, 
you know, or individuals when you're talking about a seed grown plant showing, you know, very distinct characteristics. Here are some uppers on Loeavici ibashiana. This is the female that I do a lot of breeding with. And the lowers are almost black with a much more thick, chunky, rigid, toothy kind of peristome. But beautiful. We have Imavici, a very popular hybrid from EP that's a must have in the collection. This is all in upper pitchers. And one thing that I love about this particular uh, now clone, because there are cuttings of this one, is that these are a little wishy-washy right now, but as the months and weeks go on, this one's starting to do it. The peristome on this uh, variety here turns almost black, like this dark, shiny, bronzy black uh, on the lowers too. It's really spectacular. Have some uh, bromeliads hanging out here. This one is uh, Veresia. This area. I always forget how to say this genius of a bromeliads. It's Viresia, Viresia, but beautiful. They love the same conditions as the Nepenthes. We have some danglers on Maxima Dark Jacqueline. Hanging out. Um, what do we got in here? There's all kind of stuff. Loe Ivici Ibash, or this one's just Loe Ibashiana. I'm so used to saying LVB, VMB, or Loe Ivici Ibashiana that it's part of my, like, the first words that come out of my mouth. What else? Uh, we got some uppers on, this one is Platykyla cross Imavici. There's one hiding in here that's so cool. This is VCIK Spathulata Jacqueline. Look at that flare. And almost like Spathulata, uh, it gets that nice dark peristome eventually as it ages. Here's a nice Truncata Squat. Nice tubby pitcher. And if we back up a little, there's an awesome hybrid here. This is another Rocco Exotica Bashiana Vici, Loia Vici Bashiana Maxima Mira. This one's starting to go off. We did just get this one in, but oh my God. It's like a little gremlin or something, kind of reptilian. Another one that will be great for breeding. So let's come down the walkway. Oh my God, there's so many plants. My mouth is like becoming numb from the names. This is a Platycerium uh, elephantatus or a staghorn fern. You guys have been also asking for a video on those. And just no special care for these in the Highland. I just hang them up here on a pole. They get watered almost every morning. They get their water and they're on a piece of wood and they just kind of do their thing like they would in the wild. They are epiphytic, so they do like growing up in the air like that. Here is another Loe Ivici. I'm lying. This one's a Loe Ivici Tivii. Look at this. And this one here is one of the parents in the Loei Ivici Tivii cross Platykyla. And I mean, I could see why Jeff put that platy in here. I mean, just this, this is an upper intermediate and it's already flared. So it's just going to complement Platykyla further. Um, and it has, I mean, some of the uppers we've seen on them so far are just insane. Probably the whitest Nepenthes in all of the collection, Nepenthes Porcelana. This is a, a cross with Vici and Berbigie. And this one was created by Sam Estes um, that used to own Leilani Nepenthes in Hawaii. This particular clone here gets the whitest pictures out of many Nepenthes, so bright and white. This is great, Roko Exotica Bashiana Vici. 
This is with VTIM. Let me see if I could put all these in my hands. Look at that. Just beautiful traits. Here's another one. Plentiful. Let's see. Follow me. Here's another Platycerium. This one is called Stamaria. I believe it's from Africa. Uh, beautiful. Love how big and narrow the fronds are, the sterile fronds on this. I've had this one for some time now. Um, staghorn ferns can get massive. Uh, this would probably want to be in the lowland greenhouse, but it grows in here. It doesn't grow too fast, which I don't think I want it to. Um, and it looks beautiful just hanging up. You guys can see there's nepenthes like all hanging everywhere. Uh, we'll come back this way a little more. There are just plants. The greenhouse is starting to get to a point where there's vines in my head and stuff like Brooklyn, which I love. Um, this one's great. This is a uh, Loei Vici Bashiana cross Maxima truncata. Let me see if I could arrange these pictures so you guys can get a nice big eyeful. This one here is a beautiful Sib Berkei cross Alata. Love the big smooth pictures. I could just rub them all day. It's kind of <laughs> relaxing. Uh, down on the table, I love this newer one. This is a, gotta say it again, a Loei Vici Abashiana. But this one is crossed with a Loei Truncata Giant. And you could totally see the Loei Truncata parent and the dark waviness from that LVB. Beautiful Vici cross Berbigies. That ant better look where watch out where it's going. Beautiful. This one's great. Say, oh god, truncata truncata maxima stenophyll loe irocovici. I ripped the peristome. But beautiful. And this one has a lot of pictures in here. We got Talagensis Vici B. Really nice and colorful. Down here, this is great. This one's just coming into picture from a rooted cutting. It's a Vent Sib Cross Tresmodiensis, and this is Exotica C form. Really rigid, toothy, tough. One I'm excited to have in the collection. I love that plant. We have a Hamada Vici over here. Look at the beautiful striping. A lot of basils and pitchers on the bottom, like a Hamada. This is one of my favorite plants in the collection lately. Look at this upper. This one's a Platycylaraja cross Vici M. Beautiful golden pitchers. Pink pitchers, nice golden peristome, love the stripes. And they curl back a little bit, but when they first open like this one, I mean, this is great. Nothing quite like it. You could see there's some uppers. There are some basils on this plant. So what I really want this to do is flower, end up being a female, and then somewhere down the line, putting Vici I Candy Dreams on it. <laughs> Everything Vici I Candy Dreams. This one's an I May Vici I cross Vici I M. Nice striping, good shape. Very vigorous. Let's 
see if I could find anything in here for you guys. There's all kind of stuff hanging. This is one I call Cherry Bomb. It's in upper pitchers, but they're still quite interesting looking. And it's a Ventricosa Sibonensis, Ventricosa Spathulata Loei Cross Tresmatiensis. Look at all those ants going crazy. They're like, oh no, someone's touching us, run! Somebody actually messaged us the other day asking if plants are, or ants are bad for Nepenthes, and they're not. They can overwhelm the pots if they nest in there and maybe disturb the roots, but never had a problem. If anything, the Nepenthes are like, you can live in my roots as long as I get to eat a ton. So uh, unless there's too many and they're bothering you, usually not bothering the Nepenthes. This one here is a nice big Truncata fipiata coming into some nice upper pitchers. You can see nice size on them. Probably backlit by a beautiful variegated monstera. And I'll show you guys the aeroids over there when we go that way, but I'm gonna focus on mainly the Nepenthes right now. There's one hiding down here that's bizarre. This one's a Rocco Exotica Bashiana. Uh, cross with a saber dark cherry. A Rocco Exotica Bashiana Vici cross saber dark cherry. I don't think I said Vici. <laughs> Here we go. It's so scary to think of what it's going to be like in my mind when I'm really old and it's just like Rocco Exotica Bashiana Vici, Loia Vici, just going through my head all the time. <laughs> We have a beautiful orchid up front here. This is, I've had this in the collection for many years. It's a Renanthera imscutiana. And I believe this one comes from Burma, Thailand area, India maybe-ish there. But beautiful red, love it. Really, every spring, it puts out a huge inflorescence or two. And they last for many months. Uh, sometimes it's like, I cannot believe it's still in flower. As long as the humidity and the conditions are beautiful, this thing gets nice flowers every year for us. Speaking of red, look at this Truncata Edwardiana. This is my favorite one I've seen of them so far. We have quite a few here in the greenhouse, including that big one up front. But the color on this one, when it first opens, is so fluorescent. It almost looks like it's been under a grow light. And then you could see one of the older pictures here. Look at that orange with the purple. Definitely going to be a prime variant from all the seed grown plants we've seen. And look at the ribbing. Oh God. There's another Edwardsiana hybrid down the line over here. Maxima dark Edwardsiana. You could see clearly the Maxima speckling color and then the edwardsiana toothy traits ep posted a picture of theirs it was huge well over 12 inches but there's all kind of stuff oh my god look at this truncata giant cross bocarensis i don't even know what these look like on camera but these are well over a foot tall they are gargantuan almost unrealistic looking Huge. It's producing a basil back there, so I'm excited for huge lower pitchers. These are the uppers. We have Chaniana Loei in here. Or I'm sorry, this one's Loei Chaniana. And this one, I actually glanced at the tag in the back and got it. Beautiful. We have the exquisite Lingulata Crosvicii. Look at these. Oh my God. They almost glow in purple. Let me see if I could get this one here. Look how beautiful this hybrid is. <sighs> Exotica just leaves me with a big smile every time. Their creations are insane. There's one back there. <sighs> I'll, I'll see if I can climb in there, literally climbing at this stage. It has a basil, but looking good. This looks its best coming into the dead of summer with the Northiana, but this is Northiana Vici cross a Fipiata. Whoa. 
Not the biggest pitchers it's produced this year, but they do look really good. It's going to start getting uppers, which I can't wait to see what those look like. This one is neat. It is, oh God, ready for it. Uh, Truncata Aphipiata cross Maximus Stenophila Loei Rocco Vici. They bred this one with their giant select uh, form of Truncata Aphipiata, which there's actually a cutting here I'll show you guys. You could even see with the Aphipiata so deep in there, the lid bristles coming through right here. Just by the size of this plant so far, and these really, look at this one, bizarre looking traits. I can't imagine what this is going to do when it gets mature. It's so tubby. It's all peristome and mouth and like just this fat body. So this should be great and beautiful pink coloration in it. Trunk, uh, this one here is, there's a truncata about it below it. This one's Loei Moreliana. Starting to get nice big upper pitchers. mouse eaters but good size on them this is the loe ivici tvi platy kyla fancy uppers i call it a beautiful upper pitchers my favorite variant i grow here and even on the lowers it gets a really dramatic shape did cuttings on that and now the main plant is already ready to vine and should have uppers on this again in no time. Some truncata vici eyes down here. This is maxima vici eye, this beautiful size on this one. I love all the points in the peristome. There's some down here. This one is very bright and stripey. Uh, oh, give it to me. It is Spectabilis Talagensis cross truncata. How great is that lip? I want to say it out loud to myself again. Spectabilis Talagensis truncata. Yes, yes. Uh, we have beautiful Truncata Ime Vici, Maximus Stenophila Loei, Rocco Vici. 20 times fast, guys. Look at these beautiful stripes. The lowers on this thing are really neat looking. Uh, also, a female that I put Candy Dreams on, but beautiful uppers. I love when an upper pitcher could have some great uh, coloration in it. I'm sure you see the giant in the background. Loei truncata giant. Let me see if I can get in here. This plant eats mice on every pitcher. Huge pitchers. There's some hiding back in there I, I can't reach. The benches are now so big uh, and full that I can't reach in all the way. There's some back there, but these ones are big enough to show you guys. Amazing. This one in here. They're just everywhere. We'll get into some contrast. Look at the green pictures on this one. Chaniana cross Loei Marilliana. And they get that deep purple stain up in the tip uh, where the peristome connects, which is neat looking. And I also see some exudate. Beautiful. Oh my god, I love this one. This is Loei Truncata Ramaspina Truncata. Ramaspina ran away. The Loei kicked into full gear and a lot of tubby heft from the Truncata. But this is a really nice size pitcher and it is hard as a rock. Really hard. And that's what helps some of these catch mice. They can't chew or scrape out of it. Um, and the pitcher also doesn't rot as much or break down because they're so tough. Look at this one. Oh my God. What is this? Huge. I love the rippling in the peristome. 
It's almost like a squat, bizarre version of Loei Truncata. Really love that. Here's one of the pitchers earlier from this year in spring. You could see how much they change. Here's the Truncata Afipiata Giant I was telling you about. I'm going to have to reach in here. It's, we just got it in the fall as a cutting, uh, but a really nice size pitcher this far. Oh, I think it just threw up. Here's one here in the front just opening, and this will get a lot larger as the days go on. More Truncata stuff. It's the Truncata hybrids. Uh, this one's Loei Spectabilis Northiana. Prime collector's plant. Uh, actually got this one on auction from EP. It just got so crazy high expensive, but I'm like, I need it. I must have it. And uh, you know, the dedication paid off. It's beautiful. Love the dark coloration. It's like a black Loei Truncata. This one hiding in here. Rocco Fusca or Rocco Zacriana Spectabilis Cross Truncata. Beautiful striping. And if you guys can see in the background there, there's so many jungle leaves, all the different kind of aeroids and begonias. So we can walk over there, look at, at some of them. In the back of the greenhouse here, there's some seedlings over here, but I'm not gonna give away what they are. Uh, need to keep it a secret, but a lot of seedlings. Um, back here is where I do a lot of the Sarsenia fly traps. You can see all these seed grown fly traps we did. Uh, we collected this seed in the fall, and there are just so many now. Same with the Sarsenia. Made a lot of really neat crosses in the fall. I'm right by the fans, so I hope it doesn't sound like I'm getting sucked out of the back of the greenhouse. <laughs> we have a lot of Sarsenias in here that need to be weeded. You guys saw in the video, most of them are outside, but I do keep a few in here, especially if I'm just doing some propagating. Um, and dividing them. But there's a lot of fly traps down here. Most of them are outside, but there's your fly trap excitement. Not a lot of people know this, but one thing that's really interesting with fly traps is when they go to eat, if you if the, if I trigger it once, it won't do anything. Could be a false alarm, could be rain, could be nothing. But within 30 seconds, if I hit it again, it closes. So that makes sure that, hey, there must be something there. I got to close. Really neat. Don't know how they evolved that, but it's always bizarre and fascinating. So this is where some of the jungle plants start. There's orchids in here, begonias different kind of aeroids, more staghorns, whatever, all kind of stuff. So I'll just kind of glance through, show you guys some of my favorites. I'm gonna actually climb in here. Look at this beautiful variegated monstera. It's working its way up its sphagnum totem. I already made so many cuttings of these. It's kind of a weed here in the greenhouse and it does not mind the cooler months here in the highland. Below it, I I think this might be my favorite begonia in the collection, but I'm not 100% certain. Um, this one is Begonia palensis from Brazil. Huge leaves. You could see how big they are. And now that it's warmer, these are a little, I don't even know, like a sagey green. In the winter, they get a deep, dark green. So interesting how they've lightened up with the warmth. We have some Alocasia caprea. Gotta love those metallic leaves on them. And the aeroids and jungle plants over here, they don't get as much water as the rest of the greenhouse. Some of you guys have been asking how I take care of it. 
but we do have overhead irrigation. We water every morning, but these plants don't get it every morning, especially the orchids. They would probably rot if I kept that much water around their crowns. We have some different cuttings of Melochrysanum here, a beautiful philodendron, uh, philodendron esmeraldensi, just so much stuff. This one here is great, the beautiful Monstera obliqua. If you followed along, this was just a little plant not even that long ago, and now it's really starting to vine up this little totem I gave it. Uh, this one is great, Begonia Milano Bellata, one that always stops people in their tracks. It looks like it is poisonous, like something you would not touch, and maybe that's part of its adaptation. <laughs> but a beautiful begonia, and I try not to keep these too wet. A little more on the dry side and they thrive. You could see this big begonia here. Spiderweb patterns. Oh God, this one's great. Um, Anthurium cuticoense. Supposed to be difficult in high land. So far, it has been nothing but a weed. Look at the new leaves coming out. They will get like four times this size once they harden up. But it's all growing up in here. I'd love for this to scramble around the greenhouse. There's a begonia here. Chlorosticta, red form. This thing was very hard to get going, and now it is like very happy. <laughs> this is a newer addition that I'm so excited for. This is Anthurium uh, peltigerum. It looks like a cross between. It just reminds me of a mini uh, or a little tiny uh, Anthurium vicii. They're immature leaves for some reason but a really neat looking plant once it starts getting its big leaves. Love that. Uh, we have Anthurium Luxurians. I'm gonna take some of them off the table with its big belate leaves. This one's flowering. Been doing some hybridization with them, but it is so funny. Um, I casually crossbred our Warracanum with another Warrock and made a lot of little babies and I casually did it. I really didn't think much of it. Now that I'm trying so hard to crossbreed these, no. When I didn't try thousands of seeds, I'm trying, it's like, no, nah, I don't wanna, don't do it. So I'm just gonna like ignore it again and maybe it'll make some. But a beautiful, love Anthurium Warracanum popular plant in the collection. And this one's interesting because now, what is interesting is that it's getting all these side growths. It has a leaf coming out here, it has a leaf coming down the base, but this plant is just so happy. There's so many divisions coming off it. I thought it was just gonna turn into one big main stem. We have another really cool one here. This is Anthurium wendlingeri little pigtail flowers. How neat is that? I've been working hard at uh, pollinating this one. I don't know if it's going to work. We'll see. Because they have the male, first the female flowers open, and then the uh, male pollen will come behind it. So we'll see what happens. But a beautiful plant, and you can see there's another flower over here coming down. Get a load of this really neat orchid. Oh God, am I going to remember what this is? Of course I am. It's a Bulbophyllum. Oh my God, why can't I think of the name of this, guys? What has happened to me? I don't remember the name, but it's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> Sometimes that happens. We have beautiful... Oh, love this. Bow down. The beautiful Spirit of Sancti. Look at all of its leaves. There are so many on this giant. And if you haven't seen on uh, Instagram some exciting news, this one's blooming. Look at all the flowers it has. They have not opened yet, 
but I am gonna do my best to cross pollinate this. And I really hope that I can make some seedlings because everybody needs and wants a spirit of sanctity. There's just nothing as dramatic as this plant. It almost just demands respect and attention. Beautiful, I love this. Uh, there's a beat up Warracanum hiding in here. If you grow anthuriums, you'd know the struggle of keeping perfect leaves on them. You blow at them or look at them the wrong way, they will rip. But this is the one I actually uh, crossed with the wide green one. And a lot of the seedlings look awesome. There's begonias in here. Anthurium vichii. You can see how big these leaves are. They're huge. This is what happens when they rip when they're really young. Kind of looks like deformed, but you could see it's symmetrical. So it probably ripped when it was curled up, just coming out. Same, this is so sad, but <laughs> this decipient's leaf just opened. Look at how big this is. I don't even think the camera is going to be able to capture how big it is. Look at this. It's huge. And there's a big one on the front that I've never even shared. Um, sometimes I just let them go in between, but this is massive. This leaf is probably five feet long or longer once it's fully expanded and probably closer to three feet wide once it does expand out. The biggest leaf in the greenhouse. We have this beautiful velvet over here. This one's an undescribed species from Ecuador. At least I think it's still just um, undescribed. I got it a few years ago from Enid at NSC Tropicals and it has really come along nicely. It's also flowering. But I keep all of the aeroids, anthuriums, and jungle leaves separate from the nepenthes to an extent. Um, I give them their own watering and care over here uh, and they really like it. There's actually some shade cloth right over these to give them a little more darker conditions they don't want full on bright light, at least for me, in this greenhouse. They really love this shady, open, understory kind of feel. And that's what gives them the huge leaves that they're producing here. This is something I'll talk about. I really wish there were flowers on it. I've never bloomed one. I killed one. This is my second one and I've had it for three years now. But for the Passiflora, Passiflora, passion fl flower people, this one is Passiflora parate from uh, Colombia. It gets pendant hanging red orange flowers and it is supposed to be very finicky and love only strict true highland conditions. Uh, but so far, you know, we're almost three years in, it is still alive, but I'm dying to see a flower. It has not grown like this ever for me. This year it's really put on a lot of growth. It's all the way down there. It's coming over here. So I'm just like, you look big enough, but can you please give me that red orange hanging flower that I'm dying to see? I mean, I didn't name the business Red Leaf Exotics for nothing. Red and orange is literally my favorite color. It's just bright, it's alive, it's energizing. And this really is that when it does put out some flowers, but I'm just gonna keep being patient and see what it does. This is a neat plant that doesn't look like much right now. Uh, let me get into my dictionary of plant names. Um, Gabunensis. Pseudohydrosmi Gabunensis from Africa. Uh, another really weird aeroid. Very, 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 very rare. Like, don't see these at all. And it gets a tuber down here that will produce a huge, kind of like an amorphophallus calla lily, anthurium flower, yellow, and it looked like you threw black or burgundy paint in the middle. Uh, this plant has gotten very large um, since having it only a couple years, and I'm dying to see it bloom. It probably wants to go in the lowland, but I'm always in the highland, so I need it close to me. But it's growing, it looks great, and it has grown a lot. That is pretty much it for the aeroids. A lot in there. I would literally have to like climb in there. Not gonna happen, but I hope you guys enjoyed these. And I'll show you guys some, I built these big seed starting trays uh, earlier this year just to get the seedlings going. The lowland is full. 
so we needed the extra light and heat. So I built these shelves, and this is a lot of seedlings, smaller plants. You know, you have stuff like this. Beautiful Loewe Ivici Ibashiana Candy Dreams. There's many trays of these, but look at how this tray's looking. Look at the traits on this thing. See that speckle coming in from the Candy Dreams? Nice squat color. But this is where I do a lot of seed germination. And I don't really like putting them, the seeds, in the container like this. Uh, if you do it this way, it just saves you a lot of time and effort in a plastic bag. I won't have to water this for a very long time. They'll sprout in here, um, and then they can get a pretty good size in this bag. To me, this is almost like the equivalent of a tissue culture lab. You have your agar, your seeds in it. They're just getting their nutrients under a little petri dish and they just can grow and the humidity stays in there. Same thing with the plastic bag, but we're not using chemicals. We don't have to be in a lab. We're still here in the greenhouse to enjoy them, which is awesome. Uh, we'll just walk this way. This is where a lot of the seedlings are in the highland. Again, I'm not gonna share them with you because I want it to be a secret of what we're coming out with. That makes it fun. Um, but this brings us all the way back to the front of the greenhouse. We did a 360, everything looks amazing. Um, if you guys have any questions or maybe there's a plant I missed that you're curious about, let me know. Uh, but we could sit here all day and look through this. Uh, my jaw's about to fall off. Everything's looking awesome, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And a few months from now, or weeks, once the lowland is at its prime, because it's not at its prime until it's really, really hot um, with the bicals and stuff, we will do our first tour in there. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Nepenthes and plants are just amazing. And I'll see you guys next week for more plant juice. I'm so happy we finally can give you guys the tour of the Highland Greenhouse this year. See you guys next week.